So now I will describe the concept of hidden Markov models. So hidden Markov models is actually a computational method that was initially uh, developed for speech recognition and has been one of the best speech recognition methods until recently when some of the deep learning methods have improved that. So the idea of a hidden Markov model is like we have, to understand that we need to go back to Markov chain. So what is the Markov chain? So that's coming from a Markov process in, uh, in physics. And the Markov process is basically that it doesn't matter how you got here, it, it doesn't matter where you are, and then the, that will decide what will happen next. So to think about it, you can think about it as um, um, you want to predict the weather tomorrow. And you have three different options. You have it can be sunny, cloudy, or rainy. And the only thing you care about is actually that you know what weather you have today. So you have, uh, if you're sunny today, and you know that what is the probability, that you can calculate it from a data set how likely it is to be sunny one day, or it's rainy the next day, or how it's, if it's cloudy one day, how likely it is to be rainy the next day. So, you can create a matrix here, as you see to the right. So if you have sun today, you have 50% chance to have that it was right. So sun yesterday is 50% chance that the sun's in today. If it's cloudy on the other hand, you only have 12% chance that it's cloudy today again, because it either becomes sunny or rainy. Or if it's rainy, you have actually 60% chance that it gets cloudy. That's uh, so it has to be a significant varying factor. And then you start your simulation with something, and you can, can calculate what is the probability, how it is five days later. So if you know it's sunny today, you have 50% chance to be sunny tomorrow, and then you have another 50% chance of that to be sunny, but you can also go back to cloudy come back. So you can calculate what is the probability to have sunny 10 days into the future. It doesn't predict very much, but at least you can take some probabilities. So this is a marker chain. However, if you're a hidden market model, you actually have some observer stage. You maybe don't know what the, the weather is. You maybe only know that it's dry, so dry. Uh, and uh, so if it's sunny, you have some sort of probability that it's soggy, damp, dry, or dry. Most likely dry, I would guess. If it's rainy, it's more likely to be soggy or damp. So then you have a hidden stage that are... Uh, uh, that are the true system of the system, that that's what you will find out, but actually what you see uh, how you will observe the states. So the, then you're trying to op rec recreate these probabilities patterns from owned observer states. So you have a series of observer states and you try to generate all these pro uh, probabilities, both the so emission probability, which is actually the, the, the hidden states generate these observer states, and all, but also the transitions between the hidden states. So you can, for instance, have some, you can say that if it's sunny, it's 60% chance to be dry and 20% to be dry, etc. If it's cloudy, on the other hand, it's equally probability to be anything. And if it's rainy, it's 50% chance to be soggy. So that's uh, what we call an output matrix. And you also can start with, if you have these simulations, you can start with initial distribution. And you start at T0 and then you can see what's happening. So the good thing about this, this, this kind of um, models is, actually, is that you actually can train them. You can let the computer learn how to, how to get information from it. So you can basically have a series of these dry, dry, damp, soggy observations, and you can try to figure out these matrices. And you can do that using similar ideas as you do when you use the dynamic programming. So actually, you can do this. You can think that this is ideal for describing a, a multiple sequence environment. So by having different states, like this is probably a better picture. So you have a start state, and for a, you can take a sequence. You can go through a sequence, and you can align it to what you call the proof of hidden model, model. You have match states, insert states, delete states. So in the match state, you align your sequence to that position in the hidden Markov model. But then you can have an insertion, so you generate, so meaning the sequence is longer, you insert the sequence. Or you can actually delete states, you can skip, go to delete states, you skip a few steps in the in your match state and go further on. And in each of these states, well not the delete states, but the insertion and match states, you have 
and a mission. And the mission in this case is your sequence. So you can generate a sequence by going in different paths here. So you have generated an alanine in the mass state, and you go to insertion stage, you generate cysteine, you generate another leucine, etc. And then you can answer the questions how likely is it that this sequence, the sequence you have, is generated by this model? And you can use, do that using dynamic programming. And you can even also ask the questions what is the, given this sequence, what is the most optimal path for this, or the most likely path for this? Or what is the probability that the sequence is generated using all possible paths? And all these things can be done using different versions of dynamic programming. So the immediate probability is if you have mass state one, you can have if it's the only proof line, you can have basically only proof line there. You see that you have a small background distribution of all other possibilities also, so that you always have some probability to generate every amino acid in every position state. And the second probability position you have main alanines, but it's more much less conserved. So this, this really represents the probability to, for each amino acid to be in a, in a position here. Here you have a three anine, etc. So you can also, also also do local alignments and multiple six alignments by jumping around here. So you can have some silent states in the beginning, and then you just jump in. So you can see have a start state and it jumps into end state in the middle, it jumps out of end state in the middle. You can use the marker model to generate things of different lengths. You can use for other things. You can generate different distributional lengths by playing around with these kind of transitions. So you have basically two ways to score it. You can find the most probable paths, which is called Vitalby, or score for all paths, possible paths, and then use the forward and backward algorithm. So you can train the Hidamaga model using uh, analyzed sequence, basically start aligning the mechanism, you just keep on iterating it, so use what's called bound wells expectation maximization. And you estimate the number of emissions there. And often you need to start with some kind of rough estimates. So the advantage over profiles is that it's actually much more descriptive. It's a much more probabilistic model of, of describing a multi-sequence alignment. And it's more efficient. It used to be quite slow, but it, with the introduction of Hammer 3, it's actually quite fast, because Hammer 3 uses similar tricks as BLAST, plus a number of other computational tricks. 